Next up, we have the Weed Seed Bank Flush. When you think of having the best garden, you think proper plants, proper seeds, and a little bit of fertilizer. But what if I told you it doesn't matter what seeds you get, it doesn't matter what transplants you use, what actually matters more than even the fertilizer is what you do to your soil physically before you begin planting. So today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna look at. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley and I have a Bachelor of Science in Soil Science. I've been gardening since I was about five years old with my grandma and I've been working in the agriculture area for over a decade. And that I all translate into very science-based garden hacks with a touch of grandma's intelligence because she's probably smarter than most of the universities to be totally honest. Tip number one is actually removing your mulch. So mulch does a couple things in the spring. Number one, it retains some moisture, which is a good thing, but it also retains cooler temps. Now that's not a good thing when we're talking about seed germination that could potentially rot and root transplants that we want to succeed. There was actually a study done in 2018 that looked at exactly that. If a soil was cooler, we ended up with more rot in the seeds and a less robust root system for our transplants. Another study in 2016 actually looked at the effects of mulch in the spring specifically, and it turns out that mulch that is not removed in the spring can keep your soil up to five degrees cooler. Now that's why we use mulch in August. That's also the reason why we want to get rid of the mulch here in early spring. Not to mention it's going to make the rest of these tips and tricks I give you a little bit more easy. So you can pull all this back, set it off to the side, don't throw it out, and then replace it after about two weeks once everything has germinated and you will see much, much better results. Now if you're part of the Geek Crew, it's very obvious that you like science and therefore you probably want to be able to determine intelligently if that science is legit. And that's what today's sponsor is. It's Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become smarter every single day with interactive games. And these games or lessons can come in the form of math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. They sponsored a video last month as well, and several of the people on the Geek Crew actually did say that they even bought this app for their kids and that they absolutely love it. Which by the way, I'm quite impressed because some of this, the little interactive ones I've done are a little bit hard. So good on your kids for that. The idea here is that hands-on problem solving helps you learn faster. It's actually been proven to be six times faster. And it does this by helping you develop an understanding from the ground up. Starting at the bottom is probably a good place to start. All the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. This problem-solving, game-based, competitive nature is much more effective than just simply memorizing. And by just taking a few minutes every single day, you are going to become smarter and more intelligent when it comes to navigating the world around you. For me personally, I like to use the science portion of the app, and it's incredible incredibly mobile because it is on your phone, which means I can simply use it while waiting for my car to be washed or while fueling up, which is perfect because I'm a busy person. If you use my link in the pinned comment down below, you'll get 30 days free of the Brilliant app and then 20% off a premium subscription for one year. You could also go to brilliant.org slash Canada or just simply use the QR code up on the screen. Brilliant, I wanna thank you so much for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to soil prep. Number two is actually fluffing the soil. So this doesn't have to be super intense. It doesn't have to be tillage by any stretch of the imagination, but a little bit of aeration in and around that root zone is going to be incredibly helpful. This can come in the form of a pitchfork, a hand trowel, an actual spaded shovel, tillage, or just even a broad fork if you have something like specialized to no-till gardening. In 2020, in the European Journal of Soil Science, they actually showed that some aeration inside of the soil did two things. Number one, it increased oxygen, which it then increased microbial activity, which then increased mineralization and just overall nutrients being more bioavailable a lot sooner in the year. The oxygen also, while boosting the microbes, contributed to healthier root systems because roots also need oxygen to be able to thrive and survive. Not to mention, if you're not transplanting and you're actually sowing your seeds, that harder soil aggregate is much more difficult to get good seed to soil contact. So before you sow your seeds, you want to fluff that soil as much as possible. And this will allow you to pack the soil around that seed and ultimately get higher rates of germination and less loss of seed. And that is because it will then supply a very even release of moisture, which is very important when it comes to 
seed starting. If the moisture bounces around too much, you end up with poor germination or no germination whatsoever. Here's a weird one, but one that will save you a ton of money and a ton of stress, and that is actually watering your soil prior to planting. Now, the reason for this is because soil can become hydrophobic, whether it's because of a manure or a peat moss that has been dried out too much, or just simply your soil has dried out too much. Hydrophobicity is the nemesis to your plant roots. Kind of like sun is my nemesis as a redhead. That's why I'm filming in the shade for the most part. In 2017, there was actually a study done that showed that organic soils specifically, so this is soilless mediums such as compost, peat, potting soils, manure, all took 80% longer to rehydrate, and this rehydration process taking longer actually significantly reduced the germination of seedlings and poor root establishment, and in some cases for transplants, total death. So the key to having the greatest success with this is actually rehydrating that soil one to two days before you intend to transplant or put in seeds. And for bonus, you can actually use some yucca plant to help increase the permeability of that soil and help things rehydrate a little bit quicker. I'll link some soil factants is what we call them down below and you can give those a shot and that will give you the exact results you're looking for. You may not be able to see it but your roots can definitely feel it and it's compaction. It's actually one of the number one reasons for poor establishment of perennials or just any transplant annuals included. Some research done in soil and tillage back in 2018 actually showed that compacted soil within the top 10 centimeters of your soil profile had 30 to 50 percent less yield solely due to that restricted root layer zone. So one way to actually know if you have compaction is to take a metal rod, a coat hanger for example, and to push it into the soil. If it pushes in just fine, that's a sign that your soil is not compacted. But if you can't get this rod in, that is a sign that your soil is compacted and you actually want to take some steps to mitigate that. I have entire videos on how to reduce compaction in your soil, so go check those out. I'm not going to get into details here. Next up, we have the weed seed bank flush. Yes, that's right folks, a way to get rid of your weeds without manually removing them and without using any herbicides. The idea here is to actually trick your weeds into sprouting long before they would normally want to. There was some research done in 2015 that actually showed that this form of flushing helps reduce your seed populations by up to 60%. And what you do is actually quite simple. You want to simply water your soil and then wait around seven days for things to germinate. Prior to things really establishing a root and while we only have a single small tap root, you are then going to go through with a rake and actually rake the surface of that soil, disrupting as many seedlings as possible. Then you just repeat that process for as many times as you can until it's time to officially transplant outdoors. Now, of course, you don't want to do this if you've sown seeds. It has to be prior to that, but it does work great in instances where you have a perennial bed that isn't from seeds but actually from roots and rhizomes all the way to garden beds that you intend to put mostly annuals into. I personally have a pretty big issue with chickweed and so I will use this in the beds that I have chickweed in and it works absolutely fantastic. So quick recap here is we're going to remove the mulch, we are going to fluff the soil, we're going to test for compaction and mitigate it if needed and then we're going to do a weed flush and the last step just prior to planting about a day or two before is actually dealing with that potentially hydrophobic soil. If you want more science-based no fluff content then be sure to hit that subscribe button. Sharing is caring and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!